Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I want to actually do some math on the moment of inertia of the Falcon 9 rocket, because many people kept on saying, Scott, you silly Billy, wasn't it obvious that when the legs deployed, that would have stopped the rotation? Um, so you guys have said that it would have stopped the rotation. You're straight up wrong, because that doesn't happen. But those that said that it slowed down, then yes, that would actually have an effect. Uh, the question is, how big an effect? So these, this is the rocket in two different orientations. Now, how you figure out the angular momentum is of a point a distance of mass m at a distance r from the origin, the moment of inertia is equal to m r squared. And that's measured in kilograms meters squared, right? If you have a circular disk, right, with of radius r, then that is a half m r squared. And if you have a linear rod of distance r held at one end and rotation, um, you know, mass m, that's one third m r squared. Now, these are all two dimensional shapes. It turns out if you squish the thing vertically into a flat pancake, it, uh, it, it all works out. So you can trust me on this one. What is the mass of the rocket? The m of the r is equal to 26 the mass of the legs is equal to 2 because Elon Musk told us in a tweet that the legs weighed about the same as a Tesla Model S. Therefore, the full rocket actually weighs 24 and the legs weigh 2, right? The radius of the rocket is equal to 1.85 meters. That's the tank radius. We've figured this, we've seen this, it's 3.7. The radius of the legs is equal to uh, about 9 meters. Again, that is the same tweet that Elon sent. So we get two, three different things to calculate. First of all, let's calculate, <laughs> let's calculate the moment of inertia of this core. So that is going to be a half times 24 times 1.85 squared, which is roughly about a 41.1, roughly. Um, so that's the core, right? So that's the core, right? So now legs are the legs that are struck stuck against the side, right? So they are basically like a point mass stuck at 1.8 meters, 1.85. So that becomes um, two times 1.85 squared, and that gives us 6.8 for whatever, 8.5, right? So these two together means that before we deploy the legs, the moment of inertia is about 48, and that is in tons per meter squared, right? So it could be 48,000 kilogram meter squared if you want to work in conventional Newtonian units. Now, when they deploy, they instead get this nine meters and they become the rod held at one end. So you get one third times two times nine squared. And that's a little easier to calculate than 1.85 squared, isn't it? That gives us a moment of inertia of about 54 tons per meter squared. And this is, it's, it's kind of over that, more than that, you'd think about it. But what you're doing is you add this to the 41 and you end up with 95 tons meters squared. And this is pretty much two times this. So our rotation... Uh, is becomes one half, one half of what it was. But, 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 right? First of all, that doesn't stop it rotating. That only cuts the speed down. But, right, there's a big but here. RCS is slowing that is working. Right? Now, the RCS thrusters, there's a set of these, and they're trying to slow things down. And those don't change the radius, so their torque is constant. And so changing the moment of inertia, right, doubling the moment of inertia means that the torque is now reducing the angular velocity more slowly. So it, deploying the legs doesn't actually help stop the rocket. All it does is it conserves the angular momentum. It reduces the rotational speed, but then in so doing, it makes it harder for the RCS thrusters to slow the thing down to zero. And indeed, 
If you watch the video from the rocket's point of view, the rocket continues to rotate right up to the point where the, where the legs touch the water, and then it stops. And I think that might even have damaged the leg, you never know. Uh, I think the rocket is seen to, to, you know, twist a little. I actually went and I looked at a, the videos and I did a little graph looking at the rate of rotation just before and during the, the thruster firing, the descent of the landing burn. And you can actually see that the rotation is actually reducing because as the rocket fell down, and it moved from the regime where the grid fins were expected to work to the point where they were expected to become ineffective. At that point, the rocket switched over to using the reaction control thrusters. And since that was working, that was when the rotation rate started to drop off. And then as soon as the legs deployed, again, that dropped the thing by 50%, but it didn't bring the rotation rate down to zero. So there you go. That's the math. That's the numbers. Now you can see with some positive, you know, meaning that yes, it should have stopped by about 50%, maybe slightly less because, you know, we don't actually have exact model of the rocket and the mass distribution. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.